this video is going to demonstrate how to construct this part. Uh, the name of this part is a one quarter inch captive nut knob. This is a very simple part, but it's something that I use in the shop and it's a very useful product. Before you use this video entirely to create this object, I'm really going to ask that you take a look at the drawing and you do your best to create this part from the drawing. Now, the reason I'm asking you to do that is that ability, that skill of being able to create objects from dimensions, from drawings, is a really good skill that I want you all to develop. Um, you're not always going to have step-by-step -step directions on how to do something. So the sooner that you create the ability, that you develop that ability to create objects uh, from less information, the better off you're going to be. In the real world, a lot of times, you may have less information than what you have here and uh, you still have to create an object. So the sooner you get better at that, the better off you're going to be as a CAD user. All right. So hopefully you've already tried to make this and now you're referring to this video for help. Um, let's go ahead and make this object here. Uh, first off, I kind of want to look at and plan how I'm going to make this object. I have a few views here. I would consider this the top view, maybe the front view. This is uh, a side view. And this A line indicates that this um, other view is a section view of this. And that means that this was cut in half along the line shown here. And I am essentially looking at this part with half of it cut away. That gives me a really good look at this internal uh, detail here, which is this hex um, cutaway. And it's important to see that it doesn't go all the way through. There is a through hole, uh, but the hex does, portion does not go all the way through, and that is important. All right, so let's go ahead and, and start making this here. Let's get a sketch going. Now, there are a lot of ways to create this design. Um, none of them is exactly right or wrong. I'm just going to show you what I consider to be maybe the simplest or the most straightforward. And that's going to be with construction circles. I'm going to start off with two, but I will use a third. I'm just going to do a larger one, a little bit smaller one. And then I'm going to create my series of arcs. Now, um, for these 0.138 radius arcs, there's six of them. And for the 0.445 inch radius arcs, there are six of those as well. I'm going to kind of get general location here. I'm not going to worry about size too much. But to use these guide circles correctly, i take that off of construction. I want to make sure that my arc is tangent with these guide circles. That is essentially the point of why I'm using these. It's going to hold everything together. It's going to give me a little bit of a framework, uh, essentially. So let me put in six of these. Now, just to reiterate, I'm not getting these perfect at all. I'm just getting them in my drawing and working. All right, so there's my six in a rough layout of how I see it here in the drawing. I'm going to do the six larger radius um, radii arcs. And the endpoints are also going to be the endpoints of the smaller arc. So this part will be very simple and straightforward. Endpoints, tangent on the arc, connect the endpoints, tangent on the arc with the construction circle, and just continue to do that all the way around. Tangents are my friend right now. But be careful not to make tangent relationships between the small arc and the big arcs. That would not be helpful. That would just actually create more problems later. All right, so I have my six arcs at tinted blue because it's enclosed, which is a good thing. I'm going to put in my 0.138 dimension. I'm going to put in my 0.445 dimension. And then I'm going to use my equals tool to make those equal all the way around. Now, sometimes it can get real goofy. If it does anything really bad, I'll, I'll undo it and kind of take a step back. Uh, but let's see if that happens first before I worry about it. Okay. Going the right direction so far. Nothing too crazy where I have to back up yet. 
sometimes things can get a little goofy, but the guide circles really help that from happening. That's why I'm using those. Okay, overall, that looks pretty good. Definitely not done yet, but I'm going to go in the right direction. I'm just going to stop right now and I'll keep this from rotating by using a vertical relationship here. And now the third guide circle is going to be for the endpoints. The endpoints actually need to be a little bit above the center point of the small arc. So I'm going to use another guide circle to do that. Okay, and this is going to be a coincident instead of tangent. Oh, that's supposed to be construction. Okay, so lots of coincidence. Let's see. Let's keep doing that all the way around. Now, there is a little bit of a lag here waiting for the computer to do it, but it will work. Just give it a moment. Oops, let's see. Endpoint, construction line. Endpoint, construction line. So this does seem to be working. And make sure that that construction line with the endpoints is a little bit above um, the center points of that arc. All right. Now I have some more dimensions I can put in. I have this 1.071, which is the dimension between the center point, the origin of the object, and the center point of the larger arcs. Put that in. 1.071. Now, one thing I do want to point out is when you are dimensioning, uh, make sure that you're getting an aligned dimension, and I'll explain what that means. The other dimension here goes from the center point of the smaller arcs to the origin of the object. All right, now right there, if you look at those lines, um, it may look correct compared to that last dimension I did, but this is not aligned. I want a perpendicular line between the two points that I am dimensioning between. This is not what I want. It's not going to give me the correct uh, solution. Neither is this. It's got to be aligned. Perpendicular lines through those two points. 1.017. Okay. Now, if I did everything right, then it should be constrained, fully constrained right now. Kind of use my eyes to do some checking. It looks pretty good to me. Um, I can sneak in the through hole circle right now as well. Or I could do that later. I'm just going to do it now. And that is uh, diameter 0.265. Extrude this. Now I can refer back to my drawing for the thickness. So the thickness of the knob part is 0.5. And I think I need to do a minus to get it going the other direction because that's, I want to keep all my sketches on the same plane here. I just find that to be helpful. All right, that part is done. Let's reorient myself. Now there's a couple things I need to do. Before I do the hex cut, I'm going to put this kind of this boss on the back, the spacer, whatever you want to call it, uh, because I am going to cut into it. So if it's not there, I can't cut into it with my hex design. So I'm going to have to do two things here, this one inch circle. So there's the circle and dimension it at one inch, but I also need to import this smaller holes as well, or I'd have to go back and recut it. So let's project that, click OK. And now when I extrude, I can get that, and that is 0.25. All right. Now, the next step is going to be creating that hex uh, cutout. And that looks to be the last step as well. So another sketch. And I can create the hex tool, or I can use the polygon tool. Um, a big time saver compared to doing it myself. Now, I don't like putting dimensions in that at the same time I create my polygon. I like to do it separately because I much prefer to do to dimension to the flats. Maybe that's the mechanic in me. 
but I find it much more useful that way. So now I have my diameter, but you'll notice that it's going to spin around. So I'm going to grab the vertical tool. Oh, not that one. I made it horizontal. I want center point to that top point, And now that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and cut that through. And that's going to go in if I refer to that section view, minus point, uh, 0.625, also known as 5 eighths of an inch. As you can see from the preview, which I love the preview, um, it looks just about right. Let's go ahead and make that cut. Go back to my home view. Everything is fully constrained. That looks perfect. All right. Now, remember, that was just one way to create this part. There are infinite ways. You can use polygons on the outside. You can use a bunch of center lines. A um, lot of options. I just think, personally, that's the easiest. Uh, as long as you get the object with the right dimension, that's what matters.